Hello and welcome to yoga. Thank you for joining me. My name is Joanne. Let's start in a comfortable seat. I thought today we would um, do some a little more like heart openers, um, opening up around the abdomen area and the chest. So let's start in a seat. Of course, we'll work the whole body as we, oh, as we always do. So lifting the flesh, find your sitting bones and, and find some length through the spine. Let's squeeze the shoulders up at the ears just to create a little bit of tension and then roll them down and behind the back. And then tag a little weight into your elbows. And then retract your chin slightly so it's floating above the spine. The head is floating above the spine. We're thinking of a buoyancy for the head. So we're not necessarily striving or straining to keep the head upright. We're just aligning it so it's floating above the spine. Dropping through the shoulders weight into the elbows, sitting bones grounded. And then you can press the hands, either palms down for more grounding or palms up for more receptivity. So whatever you like, you can give one of each. And let's just take a couple minutes here at the beginning of our practice to bring our awareness internally. So allow the eyes to gently close. Maybe part the lips slightly so that the jaw is nice and relaxed. And see if you can find that sense of buoyancy in the head. Everything's just floating above the spine. And grounding in the hips. Once the eyes are gently closed, the jaw is soft. Just checking in with yourself how you're feeling right now. Noticing if there's any areas that feel tight or tense. Noticing the quality of your breath. We'll use the breath as an anchor for our practice if the mind begins to wander. If you feel tired or distracted, just coming back to the breath. And if you haven't already, begin to deepen the breath. So as you inhale and exhale through the nose, Notice a slight lengthening to each part of the breath. As we inhale, we open and expand through the body with the breath. And as we exhale through the nose, we just soften around that space. We let go of anything we don't need. Breathing nice and deep. So each inhale, we create a little more space and length in the body. And each exhale, you just let go a little bit more. And keep checking in with yourself, noticing if anything's getting tight. See if you can come back and let go. And just a little reminder, we use the full three-part breath, so we really want to breathe into the belly. And bring that breath all the way up to the body, into the very tops of your lungs. 
reversing that wave on the exhale, gently squeeze the navel toward the spine at the very bottom of your exhale. For the inhale, automatically reinflate your belly. Take a couple more breaths here together. Nice and deep, full inhale. And on your next exhale, we're just going to bow the chin to the chest, keeping the shoulders back, collarbone broad. Take a moment here to honor yourself for coming to practice today. Finding some gratitude. You can take this opportunity if you'd like to set an intention or a dedication for your practice today. Repeating that three times to yourself as you stretch through the back of the neck. Keep breathing and letting go. On your next inhale, we'll bring one ear to the shoulder, opening up. Exhale as you drop the chin to the chest. Inhale to the other side. So as you let your breath guide you, it should be a nice slow movement. We're not breathing fast. So taking the time to enjoy the transition as you move and noticing how that's changing the stretch in the neck. Notice if there's areas that feel more tight, more loose. So many things go through the neck. So the head again is held up by the neck. We want to think of having a buoyancy in the head, a lightness to the head. So we're stacking and using our bones when we're sitting upright. Inhale to the first side again, open up. Dropping the shoulders, lift the sternum toward the chin as the head is flexed to the side and walk the opposite arm out to the side. Activate the fingers toward the floor. Keep the chest and the posture tall, just the head to the side. And then gently rock the ear, so look over your bottom shoulder. Trace a line with the nose, inhale toward the sky, and exhale down. So take your time, and you can make the movement smaller if you need, so no rush to open all the way up. Listen to your body. If anything is painful, don't do it. And bringing the breath into the space, creating new space as we breathe and breathe. Take one more breath. Good. Slowly allow the chin to drop to the chest. Take your head upright. And then take that extended arm behind the back to the small of the back. Lift through the chest. And then we're going to take the opposite arm up. Inhale. And then drop through the shoulder. So don't hunch the shoulder. Keep the shoulder grounded. And then bend at the elbow to bring the hand behind the back. So we're not dropping our head forward. Keep the head up, right? So that elbow is pointing up. You could use a strap here if you want to. You don't need to. You can just rest the hand anywhere it lands. And that arm that's behind your back, maybe you inch it up. Maybe you connect the hands. Maybe you don't. You could, again, use a strap. You can just hold your shirt or just make the action. So there's no need to get anywhere. Keep your ribs contained here and find a breath. 
So we don't want to arch in the low back. So we don't want our ribs jutting forward. Keep them nice and contained and keep the head and the posture tall. Take another deep breath here. Good, and then stretch that top arm up. Release the bottom arm out to the side. All the way over, and that top arm is up, and then we're going to fold to the side. And then here, I want you to keep the elbows soft and the shoulders nice and stacked. So we're not rounding forward, we're opening through the side body and the chest. Feel this side of your rib pull, pull away from you. So you're kind of pulling in the opposite direction that you're folding to. Keeping the neck supported, so don't drop the head. Take a deep breath here. Good, and then use your inhale to pull yourself up. And exhale, lower the arm by the side. Let's shrug our shoulders here, squeeze them up. And down the back, open the chest, come back upright to a nice tall posture. Sit up tall, breathe in. Exhale, bow the chin. And I should have said, if you need to sit up on something to elevate the hips, please do that. So you want to make sure this feels easy in your posture. And then we're going to inhale to the second side, ear over shoulder. Walking the opposite hand out to the side again. Activate the fingers. Keep the sternum lifted. Ribs contained. Ear to the side. And then trace the line with the nose. Exhale as you look over the bottom shoulder. Inhale as you turn the gaze toward the sky. And notice how it feels different from the first side. If it does, I know mine does. So just allow whatever is there to be there. Inhaling up, noticing differences, using the breath to release and create space. And again, you can play with the angle of your head a little bit. Nothing is super rigid, but supported. Good. One more breath over here. Inhaling up and down. Good. Slowly bow the chin to the chest. Take the head upright. That extended arm will come behind the back. Inhale the opposite arm up. Deep breath in, check your shoulders, check that your posture is nice and tall, ribs are contained, dropping the top arm behind you using a strap or not. Maybe inching up. I cannot connect on the side. I could on the first, so you might find that as well. You might not connect on either side and that's fine. Again, keeping the head tall and loose so we're not straining the neck in any way in this posture. Elbows pointing toward the sky as best you can. Find your breath. Allow each exhale to soften you a little bit more. One more breath. Good. We'll inhale. That top arm reaches up. Bottom arm comes out. Reaching out to the side again. And then soften that shoulder and fold over. Softening both elbows. Folding through the side body. Again, pulling the side that you're folding away from to the other side. So we're moving dynamically. So we're folding toward this side and then we're pulling the other direction as well. Keep the neck supported, one more breath. Inhale as you stretch up, use your torso to pull up and float the arm down. Good, settle the shoulders, nice tall posture. Let's shrug our shoulders again. Inhale up and exhale back. And again, inhale, squeeze, and exhale back. Awesome. So from here, let's come into a tabletop position. We'll come onto all fours. And if you need a little cushion for your knees, I encourage you to grab one, grab one. Or you can always double the mat, whatever works for you. Having your props handy if you need, blankets, blocks, straps, all that stuff. So coming on to all fours, we're going to brighten the fingers on the mat, press them out away from you. 
activate the tops of the feet into the mat as well, and then supporting the low back with our core so we're not sagging our belly. So lifting here, press the mat away from you. Inside of the elbow will rotate toward the front of your mat. Your neck is long and we're micro bending our elbows so we're not locking in the elbow joint. So from a nice supported um, tabletop position here, uh, we're gonna inhale and drop the belly. And we're thinking about pulling the crown and the tail to opposite corners of the ceiling that we're in, of the room we're in. <laughs> so we're creating length. Exhale as you round, turn the tailbone and the head toward the mat and press the spine toward the sky, really activate. Inhale as you open, pulling apart. And exhale as you round. Using the breath, inhale again. To find new space, exhale round. We release. Let's do a couple more cat cows at your pace with your breath. So you might go at a different pace than me, and that's fine. Okay, we'll come back to our neutral spine, back to your tabletop position. Good, and then we're gonna tuck the right toes under, pressing through the calf, stretching the calf a little bit, keep the neck long. Good, inhale, bring the shoulders above the wrists. Again, you can also do fists here if you need, if your wrists are, if you have any pain, don't work in pain. Good, stretch through the calf, inhale as you come onto your toe tips, press the mat away from you, activate the back foot as well, and then lift the leg. So take the legs straight up and behind you, keep the toes pointing down and keep pressing through the heel. So we're gonna bend at the knee and point the foot, flexed foot to the sky. So we've got as best as you can, right angles with the ankle and the knee. And our hips are even to the floor. We're engaging our core so we're not sagging and dropping into one side. So from here, we're gonna squeeze the knee into the chest, round the back a little bit, bring the nose and knee toward each other, and then open the leg out like a fire hydrant, working through the hip joint, and make a big circle as you bring the leg back up. So the trick to these is to keep the core active, squeeze in, inhale, open out, and just to try to get that full range of motion in your hip joint, we're also, Activating our glute medius muscle, which helps support our posture that's often overlooked as we open out to the side and then around. Good, let's take one more squeeze in, open out, and bring the foot to the sky. Good, squeeze in, and then this time we're going to reverse. We're going to press up, open out, come in a big circle the other direction, and in. Good. If you need a break anytime, feel free to take one. Press up, open out, and around. In and up, open out, and around. Keeping that core nice and active. And one more. Keep breathing as you move. Good. Go ahead and release the knee. Let's come onto the heels for just a moment. Rest your arms, give your wrists a little turn. And then release, good, we'll come back to all fours. Finding your firm tabletop to start. Tuck the opposite toes back, so we'll switch sides. I'm on my left side now. Pressing through the calf to start. Inhaling, stimulating the toes just a little bit. And exhale back. Ooh, nice pop in the ankle joint. It's always a good way to release some stagnant energy. Good, and then we'll align ourselves. Again, engage the core, press the mat away from me. Activate your finger pads as well, so you're not dumping into the wrist. I'm reminding myself of that because I find myself, I do that often. So lifting the heel. Well, again, leg is parallel to the floor, hips are even. Bend at the knee, flex the foot point to the sky. 
Try to keep the hips even and the core strong. Neck long. We'll breathe in, squeeze the knee and nose together under you as you round your back. Uh, and then open the leg out, fire hydrant to the side and back up to the sky. Four strong. Good, squeeze in, open out, and around. Squeeze in, breathing as you move. Interesting to note if one side is more difficult, squeeze in and out and around. Good, and then squeeze in, we're reversing. Exhale, welcome to take a break if you need one. Pull the other direction and in. Good, you gotta keep going. We're almost there, squeeze around and in and up. Keep that core working, pull around, squeeze in and up. Last time. And all the way around, squeeze in and up. Good, lower the knee. Let's take the knees a little bit wide now, big toes together, push back over the hips. Stretch the arms out, let the forehead come to the floor or a block, whatever, if you need a prop here. You can place a blanket behind the knees if you need. Soften your shoulders. Bring your elbows to the floor. Take your hands in prayer pose above your head. Take a deep breath in and out. And let's release the hands and rotate the wrists again. And reverse. Walk your arms out. And we're gonna slowly walk both hands off to one side of the mat. Keep the hips back, lower the forehead, soften your shoulders. Deep breath into your side body here. Good, inhale through center. Exhale to the other side. Soften the head, soften the shoulders. Breathe into the side body. Inhale, come through center. Good. Pull yourself up to your tabletop position. Knees under hips, hands under shoulders. Walk your knees behind your hip points just a little bit. We're going to tuck our toes under and we're going to slowly peel up to downward dog. So make sure your arms are rotating forward, insides of the elbows forward, firm hands on the floor, toes tuck, and then peel your hips up slowly. Pedal your feet. Walk your dog out one foot at a time. Bend one knee and then the other. Head is relaxed. Keep breathing. So we're going to make our way to the front of the mat. You can stroll, you can step, however you like. Make your way mindfully to the front. Measure two fists between your feet, hands next to the feet. Bend the knees as much as you need and tuck the forehead to the shins. Hang your head here. Shake it out a little yes and no. And then dangle your arms in front of you and just let go of everything. So hang like a rag doll. Deep breath in and out. We're gonna roll up a little bit. We're not gonna come all the way up yet. We're gonna let the arms dangle. You're gonna come up so your hands are right around your knees. And then we're gonna sort of pull one shoulder up. And then that shoulder that's elevated, you're just going to swing it around in its socket. So let it hang and make some circles. Switch side, pull the other shoulder up and then swing that arm in the socket. Let it dangle. Good, come back even and roll up slow. Tuck your chin to your chest, slowly roll yourself up. Shrug your shoulders at the top as you open the chest, coming into a mountain pose. Shoulders above hips, above heels, nice and strong. Nice, even and neutral pelvis. Arms by the side, chin parallel to the floor. Again, think of that buoyancy in the head. 
crown of the head floats above the spine. We're grounding our feet. So we've got that dynamic energy of lightness in the upper half and grounding in the lower half. We're gonna open the chest. So bring the arms behind you as you inhale, lifting up tall, touching the palms, and then exhale as you swan dive, lengthen the arms and hinge at the hip, lead with the chest as you fold into forward bend. Bend your knees as much as you need for the hands to touch. Go ahead, touch. Inhale, come into a flat back pose as you lengthen your spine parallel to the floor. And exhale as you fold. Good, from here, we're gonna plant the hands next to the feet, take a giant step back with one leg. I'm bringing my right leg back first. I'm gonna drop the back knee and uncurl the toes. I'm finding a scissor action toward the midline with my legs. And I'm, this knee is above the heel. And then if you're comfortable rising up, add the arms. This leg can move forward or back depending on the flexibility here in your hip flexor. Lift the chest, soften your shoulders, find your breath again, scissor the legs toward the midline. And then we're gonna rainbow the arms toward the front knee side. So we're deepening the stretch here in the abdomen and the hip flexor as we fold toward the front knee side. Keeping again, the shoulders open. We're not rounding here forward. We're just reaching up and over. Good, inhale, reach up. And exhale, float the hands down. Bringing that front foot, tuck the toe of the back foot. As you lift the back knee, we'll take both hips high and step into a downward dog. Good, we'll flow here. Inhale, bring the shoulders above the wrists. Pressing a little energy through the heels as you bring your hips and shoulders in the same plane. Core is nice and strong here. We're going to drop the knees right where they are. And then plant the chest between the hands and the chin down. Elbows stay close. Slide the legs out. Underneath you tap the feet down and inhale for low cobra. Drag the mat toward you, pull the elbows in. Using the muscles in the back here, keep the feet glued, the neck is long and loose. We're breathing into our belly, one more breath here. Good, release the chest down. And tuck your toes. You can come through tabletop or straight back to downward dog. From your downward dog, take your time, bend your knees. You can stroll, you can stroll walk, or hop to the front of your mat, however you want to get there, moving mindfully. Fold over the legs, forward bend. Roll yourself up, tuck your tailbone, inhale. Coming to the top of the mat, open the chest. Back to mountain pose with that neutral pelvis. Good, reach the arms behind you as you inhale. Deep breath in. Exhale, swan dive, forward fold. Inhale, flat back, open the chest. And exhale, melt. Good. Taking a giant step back with the second leg. So I'm on my left side. I'm going to drop the back knee. Uncurl the toes. Check your alignment. Scissor the legs. As you're ready, rise up. Add the arms. Keep lifting. Soft shoulders. So we don't want to feel any tension <laughs> on the knee or in the low back. So we want to lift, supporting keeping that neutral pelvis. From here, breathe in, soft shoulders. Rainbow the arms to the front knee side. Reaching, getting a deeper stretch in that hip flexor. Creating some space in our core, combating all of our sitting that we often do. Good, inhale, reach up tall. And exhale, float the hands to frame the foot. We'll tuck the back toes again, lift the knee, lift the hips, and step it back to your downward dog. Good. From your downward dog, breathe in and out. Settle the heels. Good. And then we're going to bend our knees and take a giant step forward with your left foot. 
bringing the left knee uh, foot through. You can always reach back and pull it forward if it didn't make it to the front of your mat. Coming into a lunge position here. I'm gonna pivot my back foot down and check heel to arch alignment. Once I've got that, I'm gonna power through the front leg and reverse the cartwheel up to warrior two. So double check your alignment here. Hips face the long edge of the mat, arms are long and shoulders are down, soft. Extending the arms away from you. We wanna open this knee so we're seeing our big toe and our peripheral vision. And then gaze to the front hand. So again, my pelvis here is pretty neutral. And I'm breathing, I'm lifting up out of the back, softening my shoulders, grounding my feet. Really working the legs here. This leg's opening, this leg's turning in. We're engaging the outer edge of our back foot. From here, we're gonna turn the palms to face the ceiling. I'm gonna inhale and breathe as I reach forward, leaning forward a little bit. And then I'm gonna exhale and float back to a peaceful warrior. Opening through the front body and the ribs here. I'm still lifting up out of the back body, so I'm not dumping into my back. I'm not really, I'm not leaning back here, so I'm still lifting while I'm stretching here. So keeping the shoulders still above the hip region. We're not leaning back. Soft shoulders, deep breath. Again, see if you can find some space with the breath. Notice the legs are still active and working here. I haven't lifted up out of my front knee. Inhale, slowly come back to your warrior two. Take a breath in and out. Let's breathe in together. And then we'll exhale, cartwheel the hands down to frame your front foot. Turning the back heel up, lift your hip and step it back to your downward dog. Maybe you pedal the feet a little bit. Good, let's take a flow here. Inhale, come to a plank pose. Engage your core, nice long neck. Breathe in. Exhale, dropping knees, chest, and chin. Using your core to lower down. Slide the legs out as you inhale for a low cobra. Pull the feet. And again, pull the mat towards you. And maybe lift the hands here just to see that you're using your back. You don't want to power up to the arms. Take one more breath. Good, releasing the hands by the side, chin down. Tuck your toes. And again, you can come through tabletop or float back to downward dog, up to you. I'm gonna bend my knees and gaze forward. Now I'm gonna take my right foot all the way up. Again, you can pull the leg through if it doesn't make it through. Coming to our lunge position, lower the hips. Pivot the back foot down. Check your alignment, heel to arch. Once you've got that, reverse your cartwheel up for warrior two. We'll turn around. Hips face the long edge, arms are long, fingers pull out, soft shoulders. Engage the outer edge of the back foot, open the inner knee, the front knee, excuse me. Shoulders are above the hips. Gazing to the front hand, find your breath here. Lots going on in this pose. Core is active, head is nice and buoyant. Good, we're gonna turn the palms up slowly. Find a deep breath in. As you reach forward, inhale, and then exhale, float back. Again, keep lifting, don't lean back. Lift up, open the front ribs, breathe here, soften your shoulders. Soften your face. Keep the knees working. Keep that leg opening out. Take one more breath here. Good, slowly exhale back to your warrior two. Nice and open and grounded. Take a breath here. And breathe in. 
Good, we'll cartwheel the hands down to frame the foot. Turn the back heel up, lift your hips, and let's step back again for downward dog. We'll flow here, inhale, plank pose. Exhale, drop knees, chest and chin. Inhale, into a cobra position here. This time we're gonna slide the elbows out under your shoulders, sphinx pose. So we're gonna keep the arms parallel to one another. Hopefully you guys can see me. So the arms are parallel, elbows are right under my shoulder. Tops of the feet are glued down, and then I'm lifting up out of the shoulders. The neck is long. I'm gazing in front of me, so I'm not looking down. You can actually look down a little bit to elongate the back of your neck, but we're pressing into the elbows and the forearms and lifting through the heart. Now, if you have any tension in the back, which you shouldn't, you want to tilt the tailbone toward the heel or maybe come down a little bit. We don't want to pinch the lower back at all. So it might be different for you depending on flexibility. Breathe here, one more breath. Good, let's take the hands back under our shoulders where our elbows just were, chin down. Good, tuck your toe, um, actually don't tuck your toes. Push back for <laughs> in the child's pose here. Good, so the abdomen on the sides if you can, or use a prop. And breathe here. Good, now I'm gonna tuck my toes under and keep my hips back to stretch the bottom of my foot. I'm gonna bring my forehead back to the floor and maybe reach around and grab for your sole of your foot if you can. No worries if you can't. Just stretching the bottom of the foot, feeling through that big tendon. Maybe a little foot massage if that's accessible. Even just stretching that fascia on the bottom of the foot is great. Good, and then walk the hands out. Come back to tabletop, inhale up. And then turn back around. So we're on all fours and tabletop again. Good. I'm going to sit back on my heels and then actually let's come onto all fours, tuck the toes and take your hips up. Let's come into downward dog one more time. And then we're going to walk ourselves to the middle of the mat. So walk up halfway, bring your hands halfway, come to forward bend at the center of your mat and fold here. Just see where you are compared to where we started. Okay, we'll roll up, inhale slowly, roll yourself up. All the way to the front of that, open the chest. I'm gonna move my cushion to the side. And then we're gonna be at the center of our mat for a balance pose next. So I'm gonna have us do the dancer today to um, keep in theme of opening the chest and the abdominal area. So starting in a mountain pose, feet are hip width apart. And this is a little more challenging, so don't worry about it. If you wanna take a different balance, you're welcome to do that. I'm gonna to turn to the side so you can see me a little easier. So I'm gonna start on my left leg as my standing leg. So I'm gonna take my left arm out, thumb behind me. No, I'm taking my other arm out, thumb behind me. Opposite to the standing leg, right arm out. Left leg standing, right arm out, excuse me. So for balance, we always wanna fix our gaze so we can um, steady ourselves. So find something to look at that's not gonna move. I'm gonna shift my weight to my standing leg and I'm gonna make sure I'm micro-bended in that joint so I'm not locking the knee. And then as I feel ready, I'm gonna swing my right foot into my right hand and I'm holding notice the instep of my foot. I'm gonna bring that together, I'm engaging my core. And I'm gonna set the opposite arm up for counterbalance. Soften your shoulder. So I'm holding the instep. You can use a strap here if this is not accessible to grab the foot. You're welcome to use a strap. 
you're also welcome to use a wall or a chair if you need that as a help and support. So from here, I'm going to breathe in. I've got my gaze nice and soft. And then I'm going to kick into the hand. So I'm kicking back and hinging over my hip. My standing leg is my fulcrum for balance, and my arm is by my ear. So I'm opening everything out. I'm getting a nice, great quad stretch here, opening through the abdomen and my hip flexor. And I'm opening my chest. So really, we're holding the instep of the foot so we can kick back to open the pose. So I'm not pulling my foot. I think if you hold the outside of the foot, you have a tendency to pull it. So this is a great way to kick out. And if you fall out, don't worry about it. Let's just try again. One more breath if you're still with me. Nice and slowly. Bringing the leg down, release the foot and the arm. Good. Shake it out. Forget about it. Switch sides when you're ready. So every day is different with balance. So if it's a struggle, don't stress about it. Just notice that. Tomorrow it'll be different. So switching this, the weight to my right leg now, my standing leg, and micro bending that joint, turning my left hand out, thumb back. So I'm also opening this shoulder, I'm rotating the shoulder um, laterally around the bone. So I'm opening out. Once you fix your gaze, maybe you envision roots from the sole of the foot moving down. Fix your gaze, swing the foot into the hand, catch the foot or use a strap. Opposite arm reaches up. Soften your shoulder. Breathe in deep. As you're ready, you're going to exhale as you kick into the hand and hinge forward. Breathing. Nice and deep, nice soft gaze. Noticing. Of this quad feels, this hip flexor, the chest, probably different from the other side. If you're still with me, let's take one more breath together. Good, and slowly we'll transition back out and release. And if you fell out, the key is to not get frustrated with yourself, be kind to yourself. It's all good. Okay, now we're going to come back to the front of the mat. So let's take a, starting in our mountain pose here, let's keep a nice neutral pelvis, sweep the arms behind you, inhale, reach up, catch a wrist, and reach up and over, side stretch. Good, inhale, through center, switch sides, reach up and over to the other side. Good, inhale. Release the arms by the side. Shrug your shoulders as you open the chest. Good, and then we're gonna come down to the mat. So I'm gonna come down onto my knees and transition however you like. Maybe you wanna come through a squat. I'm gonna roll up the front of my mat to create a cushion for my knee. So I'm gonna come onto my knees here. And then if you're not as flexible in the back or you're new to the practice, you're going to tuck your toes under so your heels are not as far away from you. They're a little bit closer. And, and, and we're going to do the camel pose. So in the camel, um, you don't have to come off the back at all. It's not necessary. You're still going to get benefit from the pose. So um, I'll walk you through it. So we're going to take the elbows behind us. My thumbs are around my waist and my hands are supporting my sacrum and my low back. So I've got nice firm support there, thumbs at the waist, kind of above the hip bone there, elbows back. So I feel a little bit of momentum in the quadricep and the chest, like I'm a wheel about to roll forward. So that's the momentum there. So I'm lifting the sternum to the sky. And I'm just noticing here how this feels. I might want to stay here and not come off the back at all. You can feel a little lift in the chest, a little more lift in the sternum as you pull the elbows back to get a little more into that. 
And if you want to come off the back, you'll take one hand at a time to the heel. So if my heels were untucked, I'd have further to go. So that's why I have my toes tucked. And then I'm still lifting the sternum. My shoulders are opening back. My chest is lifted. Notice my neck is still supported. I'm not dropping my head back. Unless you're advanced, you don't want to do that. <clears throat> so keep the neck supported. And then I'm feeling a nice stretch in the quads here as well as I lift the sternum. No tension in the back. If the back is pinched or it's uncomfortable, come off the back, come off the heels. You don't have to come down. Find a nice deep breath in and out. Good, and then one hand at a time will come to the back with support as you lift up. So feel that lifting through the sternum as you come off the back. I'm gonna tuck, uncurl my toes now. And then we're gonna do the gate pose. So I'm gonna take one leg out to the side. So my leg is straight out and my foot is grounded. Outer edge of that foot is grounded. My toes are facing forward. I'm gonna rest my right hand on my right extended leg. As I inhale, take the left arm up. Soften the shoulder. And then as I exhale, I'm just reaching up and over again. So also getting a nice side stretch here into the hip flexors a bit. Stacking my shoulders. I'm not rounding here, I'm reaching to the side. And I'm also not leaning on this leg. I'm just using it as a guide as I slide down and fold, however far you want to go. Whatever's comfortable. One more breath. Again, use your torso and side body to inhale, reach up, and lower the arm by the side. Take that extended leg back in, coming back to your cushion. Good, let's take the hands around, thumbs around the waist one more time, tuck the toes, elbows behind you, and then inhale, lift the sternum, maybe one more camel here. Up to you, you can skip it. This is a big pose, so that first one was enough, no need to do another one, only if it feels right. Good, and then we're gonna come up, or I can stay as long in that one. One hand at a time to the back for support, uncurl the toes. Left leg extends out to the side, toes point forward. Arm is extended on, left arm extended on the leg just for a guide as we inhale, bring the right arm up. Soften the shoulder. Exhale, fold. Reaching up and over. So you should feel that here through the whole side body. Finding your breath. Again, not leaning on this leg. Lifting up. Good. Slowly inhale all the way up, reach up, and lower the arm by the side. Bringing that left knee in. Okay, we're going to uncurl the mat. And then we're going to sit down to the side and bring the legs out in front of you. So lifting the flesh from your sitting bones, draw the toes toward the face, and we're gonna unfurl to the back. If you want a challenge, if you wanna work the core a little bit more, you can come down through the boat if you'd like. So we'll do a brief boat together, and then you can skip this if you don't wanna do it, if you don't have to. So I'm gonna lift my sternum to the sky, dropping my shoulders, open the chest, walking the feet back, onto my tippy toes, and then maybe the feet come up. I'm still holding my thighs. If you want more of a challenge, you reach the hands toward the feet. Keep the sternum lifted. If you collapse, you've gone too far. Find your breath. And then if you wanna come down, I'm not gonna do it because I still have a tailbone issue, but if you wanna come down through the boat, evenly lower the head and feet together. And if not, don't worry about it. You can hold the thighs and unfurl, or you can stretch the legs out and unfurl. Totally up to you. Awesome. So coming all the way to the back. Once you get there, bend your knees to place your feet on the floor. Good. And then we're going to 
Walk the heels close to the glutes. Keep the feet parallel. If you have a block, it's a nice place to keep a block between the knees so that the knees stay parallel. Walk your hands down toward your heels. And you want to make certain that the neck is neutral here. So if you need a cushion under your head so the chin is not lifted, use a cushion under the head. Hands and feet are on the mat, nice and even, and the head is on the floor. Your gaze is straight up. So we're going to press into the hands and feet nice and even. I want you to think about the knees moving toward the front of the mat. As you inhale, peel up. So the glutes stay a little bit soft. So in this bridge or pelvic tilt, we're bringing the chest to the chin, not the chin to the chest. The head stays neutral. Exhale, lower down. One vertebra at a time. Tuck your tailbone so it comes down last. Back to a neutral spine. Good. We're going to do that again. Take it up to the bridge. Inhale, peel up. Nice and easy. Maybe the shoulders roll under you a little bit as you press the hips up. When you get to the top, take a deep belly breath here. Inhale. And exhale, slowly lower down, nice and easy. Good, we're gonna do one more bridge. So if you have an alternate, if you wanna take a full wheel, if that's a part of your practice, you're welcome to. Um, or I'll give one um, variation of the bridge if you'd like to try it, no pressure. Hands down, feet parallel, knees parallel, inhale. Draw the knees to the front of the mat as you peel up, creating lots of space in the chest and the abdomen. And then I'm gonna roll my shoulders underneath and clasp my hands behind my back. This is optional. Hands on the mat, inhale up. When you get all the way up, breathe into your belly. See how spacious you can make the abdominal cavity, take one more breath. The hands are clasped, release them by the side and slowly lower yourself down, one vertebra at a time. When you get to the back, take your arms out to a T, palms to the floor, walk your feet out a little bit, and then just gently windshield wiper your legs side to side. Floppy legs, letting go. Good, and then bring your knees up. Walk your feet in a little closer, heels toward the glutes. Bring your knees into your chest. Give yourself a little squeeze and massage your lower back. So make some circles on the back. Keep breathing and reverse. Good, keep breathing, squeeze the knees into the chest. And then we're gonna reach down for the ankles if you can. If you can't reach the ankles, you don't have to. Bring the feet to the sky. You can hold the thighs or the ankles. Maybe you can reach the toes. We don't wanna round our shoulders up. We wanna keep them grounding. And we want our tailbone grounding as well. So legs are wide, knees are deeply bent, feet to the sky. And we're just neutralizing the spine and the hips a little bit. You might find a little resistance in the feet as you push up, as you pull down at the same time, just to deepen that hip stretch. And maybe you rock gently side to side. Just make sure you're not coming off the ground with your bones. You want to keep your tailbone down, your sacrum down, your shoulders down. Pull down one more time in the middle as you resist a little with the feet. Slowly bring the soles of the feet together, release the legs to the floor, recline cobbler's pose. You can take fists under your hips for support, or you can rest the hands on thighs for more of a stretch. Whatever you need. Relaxing the head and the face. Take a deep breath in and out. Feel the soles of the feet connect. Feel the all ten toes connect. If you're fortunate enough to have all ten toes, 
One more breath here, softening. Finding some gratitude for our feet. Good, and then taking the hands outside of the sides, they're not there, and slowly lift the legs up. So maybe walking the feet out to the edges of the mat. If you have any tension in the lower back, just let the knees fall to the center. restorative pose for the back. You can take a rolled blanket under your knees if you want. If you feel good in the back and you want to stretch your legs out, you can. Feet mat width apart. And then bring the palms to face the sky. Tuck the shoulders under your chest to open the heart and allow the fingers to curl as they relax to the palm. Make sure the neck is neutral. Rock your head gently side to side and bring it back to stillness at the center. Take a deep inhale here, nice deep breath into the belly, through the nose. Exhale, open the mouth and sigh it out. Let go of any tension remaining in the body as you completely relax. You guys stay there on the floor as I come up. Just take a couple minutes here to relax. If you can stay longer, I encourage you to do that. And leave a lot of time for final relaxation. So please feel free to stay longer if you have time. And we all have at least a couple of minutes here. So we're going to relax the entire body completely. So see if there's anywhere you might be holding tension. And surround that tension on the inhale with your breath. And use your exhale to just let it go. Let it sink into the mat, into the earth, with the out breath. Relax. Relax. And just gently begin to wiggle your fingers and your toes. Maybe rock your head a little side to side. And nice and slowly as you're ready, bend your knees to place your feet on the floor, roll onto the right side of your body. 
coming to a fetal position for just a moment to notice any changes in the body and mind. Maybe recall any intention you may have set for your practice today. And as you're ready, using your left hand to push your heavy body back up to a comfortable seat. We'll meet in easy pose. Sitting up nice and tall, again, floating on the spine, feeling that buoyancy in the head. And then we'll inhale as we sweep the arms up together. Nice deep breath in, gather some energy. Feel your hands at the top as you lower them down to your heart. And bow to yourself with gratitude for practicing yoga today. And we'll bow to each other. Namaste.